to South Africa. And uh, in the trip was included a visit to Sangoma, which is a natural healer, uh, shaman. And she was talking to this uh, shaman and shaman asked her uh, certain questions and she asked her, how are your relationships doing? And, uh, well, she had to admit that her relationships were only very brief, maybe lasting no more than two and a half years. And so the Sangoma uh, looked at her and she said, well, um, this may change when you are able to take your grandmother out of your shoulder. So this gave her the shivers because she found it such a good match with her experience. Because the only person alive that was really nice to her was her grandmother and she also looked like her grandmother. Another thing was that she also had some knowledge about the social panorama and she recognized this, this woman used this view of people being in places and could be moving around and having and, and the location where they are having a great influence on your life. So what may this mean? It may mean that the Sham, the Bushmen who live in the South of Africa, had discovered the relationship between locations and relations a long, long time ago. And they may have given it to this Sangoma. Maybe it's common knowledge in the South of Africa that where you think of a person means the quality, the emotional quality of the relationship. The idea that we project our thoughts in mental space, in the mental space around us, is not so new. Um, concerning the social part, we had already Kurt Levine in 51, in 1951, who uh, discovered something about space. He called it a theory of social fields. And in his theory of social fields, he considered the distance and the direction where people were sensed very important. Maybe there's also a line from the South Africa over Bert Hellinger, the German, who was a missionary in the South of Africa and who had seen the Zulus execute rituals where they worked as locations and their ancestors. And then there's a link to Virginia Satir who made family sculptures. And so she had an idea that location was important in how people sense their relationships. And then there was Moreno and Peso who also used locations to do relational change with their clients. The concept of mental space was introduced by Gilles Fauconnier, a French linguist, uh, in about uh, 1997. He was thinking of how people gave meaning to words and he found out that they built sort of spaces where they saw on an unconscious level images and schemes of what they were talking about or what somebody else was talking about. So they constructed these images and when there was another context open they saw other images in another place and then he started to call them mental spaces. I came to believe that the basic rule in how we come to our knowledge, how we come to cognition is that we generalize out of our experience. So when we have repetitive experience of something, we start to create an abstraction and the same holds for space. We are in the womb and there already we start to experience space. There's we, there's the feeling of we in the beginning already probably, and there's a surrounding that doesn't belong to us, so there's, there's some sing around us, the womb, and water. And so the concept of me being here and the rest of the world being out there can start to come into being. And when we get out of the womb, when we are born, we will discover people. 
and these people are moving around and our mother may be here and there and she may be talking different and then she may be a bit annoyed. What we do when we are successful, we create one image of our mother in one location. And it may take some time before we are able to do that. Probably when we have found out to do that, we will repeat it with other people. And so we know the trick how to create a map of the social world. And we create this map in space because people appear in space. The personal timeline is a concept in NLP. It's also uh, uh, rather familiar in anthropology and in philosophy at the moment that people also discover that there is a linear structure that people create that represents time to them. So, future in front or the future over there and the past over there. So when you're very pushy or very motivated, it has to do with how you envision the future. When the future is somewhere at your rear, it will not motivate you as much as when the future is in front of you and huge and shiny. And when you have the past in front of you, you may be totally occupied with past and history. I'm a very practical psychologist, and so people like me were always looking for how can you apply this? What can you do with an idea that, for instance, the timeline that you know that where a person places the future has a strong influence on them, and so we try to to get things in motion. Can you move this person? And what happens? And can you move the person over there or, or, or over there? And when you're totally focused on somebody that's straight in front of you, can you move the person downward and a little bit to the side, for instance? What happens? And so this resulted in a collection of techniques that were specially designed in changing the imagery that made up a person's social panorama. So the landscape of people that unconsciously are forming their model of the social world. The exploration of mental space adds for another attitude in the researcher than we are used to in psychology. Because we're very much stuck to a certain number of paradigms. We need to have scans so we know then where the brain is active or we do have um, evoked potentials and we know when the brain is active. Um, we need to have questionnaires so we can read and calculate or we need to calculate behavioral things. And so in the last 30, 40 years we developed many tools to improve our technique of introspection. So we can be quite sure by also observing gestures, eye gaze, um, facial expressions, what a person is thinking of and what's going on in them. And also, of course, there are self-report and how we can check it uh, in uh, how it's in accordance with their non-verbal behavior helps us to know much more about what's going on. And so, what's around the person, how they project their cognitions in the space around them and also in their bodies will be an area of research that will go on for ages because it brings us very close to uh, what we can call the reality of uh, cognition, how people really think.